Cornerstone Interactive Studios CEO Lisette Titre Montgomery claims that the video game executives have ceded the video game industry to, quote, angry racists and sexists, obviously referring to video game players as racists and sexists. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. Wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. And if you're unfamiliar with T. Trey Montgomery, according to her LinkedIn profile, uh, she began working in the video game industry in 2005 at EA and has worked at Backbone Entertainment, Ubisoft, and Double Fine Productions. I think her biggest claim to fame is that she is the art director for the uh, Psychonauts 2. But this is what she wrote on X. The numbers don't lie. Wokeism is just sparkling profits. Beware spineless gaming executives. We are coming for that money you left on the table. Turning your communities to angry, racist, and sexists. Their poison is in your soil and you will never get it out. Time for the new era of gaming. And she is reacting to a post from Khalif Adams, the founder of the podcast Spawn on Me with Khalif Adams. Adams uh, posted a, a new zoo survey or parts of a new zoo survey he claims he worked on while he was at Intel around 2020. As Adam notes in his post, the sample size for the survey is kind of small. In fact, according to the survey, only 1,824 individuals participated and it notes they were, quote, recruited whatever that means. It also notes all the individuals are located in the United States and that they are between the ages of 10 and 65. The survey then notes they applied this ridiculously small sample to what they believe was going to be 2.7 billion gamers worldwide in 2021. Uh, remember, this is just purely U.S. Uh, these people are just from the U.S. and they're trying to apply this globally. Okay. On top of all this, Intel's gaming and esports general manager, Marcus Kennedy, appears to indicate the entire survey was conducted in order to push a diversity and inclusion, inclusion agenda in gaming. This is what he writes in the introduction of the survey before you even get into any of their uh, data points and their conclusions from the data. This is what he said. The common misconception that all gamers are young white males could not be further from the truth. Practically everybody engages with games in some way, shape, or form. As gaming continues to grow in popularity, so does its ability to connect people across geographies, generations, and more. However, there are many challenges to overcome when it comes to representation and diversity in gaming. Intel is constantly looking at how to best serve the gaming community. We know that there are huge visibility technology and accessibility gaps impacting marginalized and unrepresented communities. Furthermore, he, re he reveals or seemingly reveals the entire survey was conducted to, to address this. He says, in order to address this in real, impactful, and sustainable ways, Intel collaborated with New Zoo to gather relevant and actionable data. So I think this entire survey is an absolute fraud. Uh, he's admitting here that the survey was done to basically uh, address these assumptions that he's making rather than see if the assumptions he's making are actually true. Uh, so I think this entire survey is just a bunch of bunk. And it's ironic that this woman is citing this uh, this data uh, and claiming that, uh, that that this is is what she's using to cite this data when it looks like the entire data is just a bunch of garbage in order to um, reinforce her her ideas. Right. Even though it's unclear if the data actually does do that, because it said, again, in order to address this in real, impactful and sustainable ways, Intel collaborated with New Zoo to gather relevant and actionable data. So they are already taking this idea that this is a problem and then trying to find the data to support that problem so then they can do action items. I mean, uh, absolutely fraudulent on number of levels, in my opinion. And then he concludes this. Uh, he concludes the introduction writing this. Diversity and inclusion efforts are a top priority for Intel. And this report is representative of Intel's desire to do better uh, or to better understand its diverse global customer base. As part of that continued commitment, Intel is taking key learnings from this report and shaping current internal and external programs to better serve gamers from all backgrounds and walks of life. They're literally taking a report from uh, a survey conducted from less than 2,000 people and <laughs> reshaping their entire company around it, uh, at least, or significant portions of their company around it. Uh, and a report that looks to be fraudulent uh, to begin with. So, or at least uh, highly, um, I don't know what the, the right word is here. Um, highly uh, has the wrong intentions, I guess, uh, is maybe the right word. It's probably not the right phrase, but I'm sure you guys know what the phrase I'm thinking is in the comments below. 
So I think it seems apparent the survey is not actually done to show any kind of real data, but rather an attempt to shape a narrative around gamers. As novelist and pop culture analyst Brian Niemeyer noted in a recent blog post, polls now exist more to shape behavior than quantify. And I think this is an example of that. I think they're trying to shape behavior, trying to influence people into believing this is what reality is when that's likely not what reality actually is, as we can see um, in the evidence in front of us. And some of that evidence is is uh well before we get to that let's go to what uh the survey claims so it claims that quote, half of us gamers claim not to play games they felt are not made for them which represents a big opportunity for publishers and developers to meet those needs video games with more diverse characters naturally appeal to a broader group of gamers and tend to increase a um gaming genre or franchise popularity across a wider audience a significant share of gamers in the u.s feel game companies should take a stance on societal issues irrespective of the respondents race gender identity sexual orientation or having a disability i highly doubt that because if you look, remember this is the united this is people in the u.s they're claiming too but if you look at this and you're trying to apply this globally there's a reason why you don't see uh, lgbtq pride month happening uh for uh ign saudi arabia or microsoft saudi arabia or or Microsoft Egypt or other countries outside of kind of Western Europe and the United States and like Canada and Australia. Nevertheless, the it goes on and says, sitting on the fence for certain issues may seem like the safer option, but taking an active stance may lead to increased engagement and revenue among the diverse gaming audience. So uh, let's get into some of the evidence that we've seen right now that this has actually not panned out. Uh, one can look at Saints Row, uh, and Emb an Embrace group shutting down the developer behind it, Volition. Saints Row was an absolute failure. It did not do well. The developer behind it has been shut down by its parent company, Embracer Group. You can also look at Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. It has performed absolutely uh, abysmally. And Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff admitted that on the company's most recent financial earnings report. We also have seen financial reports from Square Enix after they shut down Luminous Productions uh, that Forspoken was a failure for them as well. And then most recently, we have a report from Remedy Entertainment admitting that Alan Wake 2 has not broke even yet despite being its fastest selling title so a lot of evidence to the contrary of what this 2020 survey is claiming again i think this points to the fact that it is trying to shape a narrative uh and try and shape reality uh, or shape uh yeah they want to shape reality into their fictional narrative that they've created in their head when reality is saying no that's not actually uh, how people are engaging uh, Teacher Montgomery addressed these failures of uh, games like Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Alan Wake 2, Forspoken, Marvel's Avengers, etc. They did all this stuff. And she said, sure, had nothing to do with bad investments in saturated markets and the rejection of live service models. Oh, sweetheart, I know math is hard. I don't think Alan Wake 2 is a live service game. I don't think Forspoken was. Maybe Saints Row was. Obviously, they were going to try and do that with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Uh, but you have all of these other, like, so she doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, into what she's saying. She's picking and choosing um, based on that. I do think there is a common thread and that it is indeed that people are rejecting the DEI um, initiatives that were baked into all of those games. But uh, let me know what you guys make of what Lisette Teacher Montgomery, the CEO of what's her company called again? I've already forgotten. Cornerstone Interactive Studios had to say about video game executives surrendering the video game industry to quote angry racist and sexist let me know in the comments below remember to always be charitable but to always speak the truth